Hey folks, so this is a VS80 Philips color monitor. Um, I did actually do a review of, uh, of these guys a while back um, and, uh, and they're very, very nice and tidy monitor. Um, Commodore people will probably recognize this as the 1080 monitor. In fact, I believe Philips uh, licensed it to uh, Commodore um, for a while um, and they came out in that beige format. But this is the same model. Um, and very few people knew about it until recently, but essentially this is the um, this is exactly the same type of monitor, except because people didn't know much about it, uh, it stayed relatively inexpensive until let's say about a year ago. So they were still plentiful on eBay, and now I can't seem to find any. So this one isn't working. It's the same model I reviewed a while back. You can see it here. I use it for my uh, my PlayStation and Commodore. And uh, this one isn't working. I had another one that I used for my Donkey Kong Cabaret scratch build. So, um, and what happened is I started using this guy, well, the chassis of this guy, and um, I broke the chassis, or I broke a part of it. So I'm gonna attempt to repair this. Uh, I already know what's wrong with it, and more or less how to repair it. So let me open this up and, uh, and show you exactly what it is. So here's the inside of our beast. So people who've worked on monitors before will instantly recognize the problem. We're missing the anode. There's no anode cup and wire or anything like that. And it comes from this flyback transformer into the anode. And, uh, and uh, everything worked uh, at the time when I was working on it. My problem is I broke the anode. It was actually quite crusty and crummy and that's what happens to them. They can sometimes, the plastic that isolates them, it's quite thick. Um, you see here and uh, can actually just deteriorate and the cup was just almost dry it wasn't great it wasn't great and uh, um, it broke when I, uh, when I was handling it long story short we need to replace this uh, unfortunately the flyback for these monitors the VS80 is not available anymore you can't find these um, or of rarely, very seldom. You find the the flyback for the 1080 for the Commodore one because the chassis is slightly different. But this uh, this type of um, of flyback you can't find. Uh, I would have replaced it otherwise, but looks like we're gonna have to find a donor monitor for this anode. I should be standard enough. So um, I've never actually done this, but I believe uh, uh, if I take a similar size. Uh, monitor or TV um, it should fit just fine so um, I'm gonna go into my other shed and uh, and look for a, for a donor monitor a TV uh, because I want to fix this and uh, and, and they're they're great monitor they handle 60 and 50 Hertz uh, different types of sync and uh, and the colors are great there's so many pots and things you can use on them and all the alignments you can uh, you can use you can actually use them as test monitor for arcade machines or for consoles it will take pretty much anything anybody who's own a 1080 or own one of these monitors uh, would know what i'm talking about so i'd rather have a working one of these than a working tv set that I can't really use for an arcade monitor because it doesn't have a vertical alignment. Anyway, let's go to uh, my shed and uh, see what I can find. All right, it didn't take me long. This is actually uh, another Philips monitor. This is a TV monitor. I, I have a few of these. In fact, I did a, a video where I converted the uh, the chassis or the, the frame. I made a frame for one of these to use as a, uh, an arcade monitor and uh, People were giving me crap because they thought I was converting it to an arcade monitor, converting a, a, a TV that didn't have a CRT into an arcade monitor. That wasn't the case. I was just converting the uh, fray or making a frame to host it. Problem with these is they don't have vertical alignment. So if you play a vertical game or a horizontal game, it'll actually be shifted uh, here or here. I can't remember, but you, you won't be able to align it uh, vertically properly uh, so it actually makes them useless as an arcade monitor replacement um, and for consoles their sync isn't great so the, the, the so some syncs actually don't quite work properly and then I mean they're they're okay 
uh, but you can't really do much with them. And like I said, I'd rather have a working VS80 monitor than a working TV set. So we're going to open this up and take the uh, anode, the anode, anode lead and cup, and uh, and fit into the other monitor. The other thing we can do with this is actually the tube is fine, and um, this is a project I'm working on. And uh, it would actually, uh, it's the same size tube as this, which is an arcade monitor. Um, and uh, provided the, uh, the the yoke plug is identical, which it seems to be, yes, looks like it is. Um, provided the yoke plug is uh, is fine, you can pretty much do a straight tube swap. You need to keep the uh, the yoke coil. Uh, because it's specific to what this mod, the, the chassis, um, unless the yoke coil measure impedance, I think, measures the same over there, but I very much doubt it's the case. Uh, there's an uh, arcade JSON, I think I did, uh, has this chart of what monitors can be donors, and I never saw the uh, L6 chassis from this monitor in the list. So, anyway, uh, I might measure it just in case, but I very much doubt it. So what I might do is use the tube as well for this guy because if you if you look here, there's quite a bit of burn. This was a poker machine I'm converting. Um, this probably will be a, a, another video down the line, but uh, if you've watched the other videos, you know what I'm talking about. But you can see the burn here from the cards and the score and all that. So uh, if I, I could I could do two things, I could leave it as is and use sort of a a dark glass on top of it that actually hides quite a lot of the burn. Uh, this is what people used to do back then. Or if I have a brand new uh, or a fine tube like that, that has no burn, I can try to do a, a, a swap and it, it should work just as good. So I might do that, I might do that. But for now, I just want the energy. So let's open this guy and uh, see what we have. Okay, there you go. This is the flyback here, and this is the anode lead that goes into the, uh, the suction cup, to the uh, anode cup. Um, and this is what creates the arc and lights up the monitor. I just want to check here. Actually, before we do anything here, this has been unplugged for quite a while. But what we can do, and uh, I discharged it already, to be honest, but I'd rather show you here uh, so that people uh, don't try to do replicate what I've done and uh, and get shocked. So you get um, a discharge tool. I have another one that's made out of a, an old, come on, an old uh, big thick uh, screwdrivers. There you go. So you clamp one side of your tool or screwdriver in, uh, in on the, uh, this should be a, a wire going around the monitor, or this should be a metal frame. You can clamp it um, on either. These arcade monitors have a metal frame. That metal frame is connected to this. You see this wire here? It's actually connected to the metal frame. So you can use the frame, it's easier, as uh, it's just the discharging ground. And then what you do is you get your tip and you slide that gently under the cup. You should hear a click at some point. We don't hear it here because it's discharged already. And uh, it means the monitor has discharge. Uh, you might have to do that a few times. So my recommendation is do it once, wait a couple of minutes, do it again, a couple of minutes, do it a third time. And third time you should be able to take the, uh, take the uh, anode off. So, uh, and you can either use your hands if you're feeling brave. I rarely do, and as much as I can, I use my tool, which is not always easy because it's hard to see, and uh, but you'd see there's a little spring clamp in there. There you go. So that little spring clamp just clamps around the hole that's over there and keeps it tight. And what creates the arc is the end of the wire is just soldered electric. Excuse me, I'm doing everything with one hand, and uh, people still let me to uh, to create to get a. Anyway, the wire comes all the way in to the end here, and uh, that's what creates the arc. Um, so we're gonna take this guy off here and uh, and fit it in my other monitor. There you go, so this is all it is really, it's just a, a thick wire with very, very strong, thick insulation around it. Come on, focus. And uh, there you go. People were complaining in the comments in a few videos about uh, me uh, 
saying I should use autofocus. I am. That's my phone's autofocus uh, acting up. It doesn't autofocus properly like this. Anyway, so this is um, a cable and it's fixed. Uh, it, it reaches into this hole all the way down and it just straight plugs like that. And uh, this clamp just uh, secures it in place. So we're gonna bring that to the other monitor, but I also wanted to just double check that the connector here should be the same. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, uh, sorry. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and central. Um, hopefully, one, two, three, four, five, and so yeah, that should be similar. So, in theory, this tube and this tube should be swappable. Uh, just the tube, but I have to take the yoke off. Um, and to do this, you just disconnect this clamp and just very, very gently just rock it uh, back and forth, very gently to move it out. And we're not going to do that now. This will probably be for another video. Uh, right now, I just want to fix my other monitor. This is the DIY version of the same tool. All it is, it's a, it's a thick cable that you wind a few times around this uh, big screwdriver. Uh, make sure it has a nice plastic end. You don't want to shock yourself. And uh, it's connected to a clamp. And you just clamp this guy onto the... Um, this charging wire or whatever. Is it the DAG? Is that what the DAG is? And then uh, you just slide your screwdriver under the end. Do be very careful. Do it a few times because these guys, even if you've discharged it, they're essentially a big capacitor. So they will rebuild charge a bit every now and then. I got shocked a few times, even though I thought it was discharged. It's because I, I should have done it a few times and I didn't. So do it at least three times is my recommendation. First time you'll hear a click, uh, or you might not, but if you hear a click, it's discharging. If you don't, assume it's discharging and then wait for a while, it will rebuild some charge. Um, and do that a few times, do that three times and you should be safe enough. Use gloves if you can. And when you're discharging, do it with one hand and keep your other hand behind your back or in your pocket. Do not touch the monitor with one hand or part with one hand and discharge with the other. It's one sure way to, uh, to uh, well, send all the uh, volts uh, through your heart. And you don't want uh, 20,000 volts going straight through your heart. So uh, one hand behind your back, a glove if you want, and do it a few times. Uh, anyway, let's, uh, let's pop this uh, thing in. All right, so I got my uh, anode cup back in. Uh, well, replacement one. I've plugged my uh, MSX here uh, just to test this. And uh, well, uh, let's uh, power this on and see what happens. Hopefully we won't get any sparks. Okay, that sounds good. Sounds good, there you go. And we have a nice picture. That's lovely. Actually, I have one additional problem on this guy. Um, is that the button here? Doesn't stay in place. So, um, actually if I forget, if I remember, remember, if I remember uh, correctly, um, yeah, there we go. Somebody had fitted an extra button here because, yes, the person I got it from actually told me that this button was fried and you couldn't use it anymore, etc. Et so that's fine. Uh, we're gonna actually just disconnect all of this and then connect that to uh, another button on the side. Uh, I leave this guy here because it provides a nice uh, clickety sound, but it'll mean. Uh, yeah, it mean this button doesn't serve any purpose. We'll have the power button on the side. But that's okay, I'm okay with that. We got him working uh, Philips VS70 uh, actually. Not 80, VS70 monitor. Uh, yeah, that's actually slightly different. The controls are different on this guy. So let's do that and then we'll be able to, uh, to adjust the uh, sharp and brightness and all that kind of stuff and uh, calibrate our monitor. Awesome. Actually, you know what? Before, before 
let's discharge this guy. You're gonna hear the click. You're gonna hear the click. It's quite scary the first time you did, but um, you need to do it. Anyway, there you go. You hear that? And another one. And another one. So that's our discharge sound uh, when we just start charging. And it's gonna happen a few times, so I'm gonna repeat that. I'm gonna see in my other Shetty 5 a button, and uh, I'll discharge it again when I come back. There it is, I found a double throw button with a, a lovely light inside it. It's uh, from uh, one of my uh, cabs that I sort of stripped and dismantled uh, to uh, convert. Uh, this is gonna go there, it's actually the perfect size already. Um, and uh, this is the old button that I'm actually gonna put back in for the sake of clickiness. And uh, here we go, here we go. We have a lovely, clean, uh, lovely clear picture on this beautiful um, now this is a, a 70 this is a Japanese modified um, MSX uh, that's running on 60 hours and it's it's working fine now the reason there's no sound is uh, I, I haven't plugged the speaker which is here yet but if I plugged it we'd, we'd get sound um, anyway so I am going to put all of this back together and uh, admire my handiwork Oh yeah, there you go. So we got a speaker connected, as you can hear. Oh, this is so cool. Um, it's quite a sharp, sharp display. And uh, yeah, it's lovely. And uh, oh, I'm so glad I got this repaired finally. Uh, this has been sitting half working, well, not half working, not working at all. Uh, broken for, for quite a while now, so. Delighted to have this fix. Good sound too. Uh, while I was at it, I sort of uh, just calibrated the sharpness uh, of uh, of the monitor. There's a few uh, pots and dials and bits and moving parts uh, inside. Uh, I spared you the hassle because that's quite tedious and just long. It's not complicated. You just find the uh, the pot and just adjust that. But um, there you go. That's it. Uh, Philips VS70, not 80, VS70 uh, fix. Uh, I didn't realize this was a 70, um, which is great, because this one is a, uh, a 80. Uh, so I have a 70 and an 80. I might need a replacement, uh, uh, one of these, because this is uh, half broken. Um, it'll do for now. Um, folks, thank you. Thank you for watching, and uh, oh by the way, um, it's in the description and uh, in the links and all that, but um, this channel now has a Patreon account um, if you want to help me, you know, support the channel and help me buy parts and things that help me fix all of this, uh, it would be much, much appreciated. Uh, yeah, and also you can find me, of course, on Facebook, Instagram, there's a Discord channel and all of that if you want to chat. Uh, anyway, folks, thank you for watching and see you next time.